This video is recorded in 720p HD. Please check your YouTube settings to ensure the 720p HD option is selected. So what are the goals for our time map package? Well, we want to create a re reusable package that lets us load time maps into any Flash application, lets us load that asynchronously with loading by support, and lets us load XML exported from the TAT time map editor. We also want something that's compatible with platform games and RTS games, like Mario and Warcraft. So why do we want to have multiple tiles per image? Well, the main reason for this is because it's a great optimization. On the web, every HTTP request for another tile image chews up bandwidth and CPU cycles on your web server, and this costs money. So in our code, we're going to trivially split this image up on the user's machine. For bigger games with hundreds of tiles, this optimization becomes very significant. So let's create our project. Go to Flex and click on the File menu, and then select New Action Script Project. We're just going to call this one Test Underscore Tile Map. Then hit Finish. So Flex has created a single Action Script file for us called Test Underscore Tile Map.as, containing a single class with the same name. So now we can begin adding things. So the first thing I'm going to do is add some progress text to my class, just to indicate that our loading is finished. And later on, we're going to use this progress text. This is just a test that our project's working. So I'm going to call this one M underscore progress text. And it's just going to be a text field. So I'm going to use autocomplete. And notice how it's automatically added in the import statement for me. I'm not going to mention every time this happens but when you see me use autocomplete, assume that that's happening for me. So let's create this. It's a new text field. And we're just going to programmatically assign its position using the width and height of the stage, which is what our object is derived from. So all sprite objects have a stage member and we extend sprite. So we have that stage member, which we can use for the width and the height. So we just want to center this on the stage. And then we want to give it some text. Very easy, and then we just have to add it to the stage so we can actually see it. And that's all we need to do for that. So that'll show some progress text, which we can sort of take away or change as we begin loading all these time map images later on, which will become very important to us. So the next thing we want to do is create a time map package, which will be redistributable between multiple apps. So I'm going to go into the SRC folder and click New Folder. And we're going to call this tile map. That's the name of our package. In tile map, we're going to create a f an action script file. So click new action script class. And this class, once again, will just be called tile map and hit finish. So this is the basis of our tile map class. This is sort of the, the, the manager for the tile map. So this guy's constructor needs three arguments. The first argument it takes is the parent sprite object, which in our case will just be our stage. So we're just going to use sprite for this one. And then next up, we're going to need to know the location of the two files, the map XML and tileset.xml files. So the tileset path is the tileset.xml. That'll just be a string. And the map path would also just be a string. So there's, as discussed in our previous tutorial, when we save out the zip file, there's a map XML and a tileset XML file. That's what those two represent. So we're just going to save these guys off as private member variables. We're going to come back and use these later on in our loading process. So it's quite important that we store them. And then I'm just going to save them in the constructor. So now that we have these variables, now we've got them saved over there. So now we can add two more classes. We're going to be representing the structure of our XML files. So the first thing we need to do is add another class. So click new action script class. We're going to populate these tile these classes in a few minutes. So this one is just called tile set. So it represents a particular XML element, which we'll get to later, but we're just defining the skeleton now. And add one more class, and we'll call this one tileset tile. 
so it'll become clearer as we go through the tutorial what these classes are for we just want to give it a sort of a, a basic bare bones structure for our application so that each of these represents a particular element in these xml files which we ought to be loading so let's go back to tile map and we want to give this object a state machine because it's going to be in charge of all of our asynchronous loading so it only has a few states but it's very important that we define them early on so that we get the structure right first before we actually start doing anything so we're just going to create some constant integers first one is when we're loading the tile set xml file so that's loading tile set xml it's good to give these guys a comment just so you know what they do the next is when we load the images that are referenced by that file so we're sort of loading things in a in a tree fashion so there's a tree of a tree of items so i'm just going to cut and paste this make it quicker for us then after that we load the map.xml file which is another state just tie that up a bit and make sure they're sequential and last but not least we have a state that's just a placeholder that means we've finished loading everything which we're going to call running so that's quite simple and then we're just going to need a member variable to store that state and that, that member variable will start off with the first state which is state loading xml So state loading tile set XML is our first state. So that's pretty easy. Now we've got a very bare bones state machine. What we need to do now is add a few more functions. So I'll explain these functions as I add them. These are going to be the workhorse of tile map, and they're going to load our XML for us and respond to events during that loading process in the state machine. So the very first one we need to add is called load XML. So load XML is sort of a generic function that we can use to encapsulate the URL request sort of thing that for action script makes you do to load XML files. So it's just a private function, never gets called outside this class. And it takes two arguments, path, which is just a string, which is the file name, obviously, and then a function to call when it finishes loading the file, which is just a function. It doesn't return anything. So we're going to make this thing trace every time it loads. So let's use that. So it's going to tell us what it's trying to load, which is very important in our later debugging efforts so that we can see if everything's working. And we're going to need a URL request and a URL loader. So let's make them. So this is going to be a new URL request. And the only argument it takes is the path, which is the path to the file. Then we have the URL loader, which is just an ordinary URL loader object. Get that right. And it doesn't take any arguments. The URL loader does have a bunch of properties, though, which we need to set. The data format is quite important. We're going to be learning an XML file, which is text. And the URL loader data format for that is .text, just like that. Then we need to tell the URL loader which functions are called when it finishes, which is done using add event listener. And we're going to be looking for event.complete, very common in Flat Action Script users. And then we just use listener, which is our function. That's what it's going to call. Last but not least, we have to get the ball rolling. So we just call load, and we give it the URL request that we defined earlier. So that's a very simple little workhorse function that we're going to call quite a few times.